Welcome to the Jim Florentine Comedy Metal Midgets podcast on Riotcast.com. We're back. Yes. New topic this week is basically going to be the brow beating that goes on in relationships. And it's mostly by women. 20% by guys, but I'd say 80% of women are doing it. And we'll get to that in a second. Because I got a lot of rage on this. Drives me nuts. But I don't know if you, if you guys have satellite radio. I do a show every week on Ozzy's Boneyard. It's channel 38, Sirius XM. Uh, 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Two hours of metal. I talk and play a bunch of shit. And then it's also replays Saturdays from 1 to 3 p.m. Sundays 9 to 11 p.m. at night. And then uh, Tuesdays 10 a.m. to noon. All Eastern Standard Time. And if you have Sirius XM on demand, all the shows are up there. So check it out if you can for you metalheads out there. I'll be on the Gigantor Tour. This whole uh, month of July, pretty much, and a little August, Megadeth, Black Label Society, Device, Hell Yeah, and Jason Newstead's band in a band called Death Division. I'll be hosting them, seeing it, so if you guys are coming out to any of those shows, I'll be out and about and, uh, you know, doing like meet and greet somewhere. I'm not exactly sure, but I'll be announcing it from the stage. I'm basically going to go out, tell a few jokes, fucking introduce, introduce the band, and, you know. We'll see how it goes. It's, they're going to be a bunch of fucking animals, like eight to 10,000 people a night in the sun, 100 degrees, outdoor venues, most of them, yelling, screaming, angry, and uh, hopefully people don't throw shit. But it'll be cool. I'll be on a bus for pretty much a month. So I'm looking forward to that. I'll be doing a podcast from there at some point. So, you know, whatever. Who gives a shit? I mean, really? Does it? Okay, we get it. I'm not a Megadeth fan, so move on. All right. Fucking relax. What else are you doing? You listen to this while you're at work or on the friggin' bus or the train or the subway or in your car. So, you know, fucking, you know, you listen to regular radio. It's eight minutes of commercials. That was my quick commercial. But I have another one right now. So, tweakedaudio.com. A lot of people are buying it because I just got a little nice little check from them from the month of May. So, if you, uh, you need some earbuds, go to tweakedaudio.com. Uh, you get 33% off if you put the promo code metal in there. No, I'm sorry, midgets. Why do I keep fucking that up? Promo code midgets. You get 33% off your order plus free shipping and a limited lifetime warranty. So check out these earbuds. People are digging them. I'm wearing them right now. Tweakedaudio.com. It helps fund the podcast. And uh, Amazon.com. If you're going to shop, go through, go to my website, jimflorentine.com. Click on the Amazon.com button and shop from there, and it helps fund the podcast too. Simple enough. One more plug, then we move on. ButterflyRadio.com. It's a great app. If you have an iPhone, it's iPhone only. Uh, go to ButterflyRadio.com, download the app. You can leave me messages on there, respond back to them. And um, it's a really cool app. Um, you know, uh, you know, people just leave comments and, you know, whatever on there. And I, uh, you know, we go back and forth and people join in and go, you're right, dude, that sucks, whatever. And it's, um, I don't know. I'm not a great pitch man, but it's it's an awesome app, ButterflyRadio.com, which, what a segue, because I'm a fucking professional. The reason this week's podcast, a brow beating, is because of ButterflyRadio.com. Joe, in northern, uh, northeastern Maryland, left me a message on that about brow beating, how his wife just brow beats him in a relationship. And drives him nuts, and he could do nothing right, no matter what. And she just bitches and complains, and constantly just, you know, treats him like a piece of shit. And I said, "That's a great idea for a podcast because I am very uh, in that world, not in my relationship, my personal relationship, because I wouldn't put up with that. I wouldn't marry somebody like that. I wouldn't be in a relationship with somebody like that. But I constantly see it all the time doing stand-up comedy. I've been doing the clubs for over twenty years now." Mostly couples go to the comedy club, people that are in, in relationships, you know, that are dating or married. That's 90% of a comedy crowd. People that are, you know, five, six dates in, whatever, or, you know, three, four years dating or married, 15, eight, three years. And I, constant, I constantly see the fucking, the tension in relationships, especially with a couple beers, you know, at the comedy club. The alcohol really brings the friggin' truth out, and there's just a lot of drama going on. And I could spot it from a mile away in every relationship. You just see the sour puss on the girl's face and the guy trying to have fun, and she's disgusted by everything he says. When you see that face, like a girl just drank, like, you know, a load of semen and it was kind of sour and it tasted bad, you know 
there's major problems in that relationship. And I see a lot of those faces. And look, it goes with the girls, the guys too. Like, you know, uh, you know, the girl just friggin' needs a lot of attention, is yelling out, screaming, causing a scene because no one's, you know, because everyone's focused on the stage at the comic and not her. So she decides, hey, I need attention. And the guy's face is like, ugh. Ugh. Again? And I see it on the guy's face too. So it's not all just women. I'd say 80%. And then there's 20%, you know, of women that do that. And just, yeah, and I, and I, and it's funny because the girl will be yelling at me, you're not funny, or you'd say, tell a joke, that's not true. You know, if I do something about a relationship, you're not, no, that doesn't happen to me, shut up. And I just tell the guy in the audience, I go, sir, what are you doing? I go, I have a feeling this isn't the first night this has happened where she has caused a scene and you're disgusted. I could tell by the wear and tear on your face that you've gone through this a lot. Why? Why are you doing this? And then she's yelling back at me, yeah, 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 all the shit. So then I'm like, sir, just look around the room. You see other couples here, right? You see them all around. Look, nobody else is doing this, okay? Most girls don't act like this. They really don't. You don't have to put up with this. You don't. Are you, do you hate yourself that much? That you ha- you're stuck in this relationship and you have to deal with this shit. You don't look at these other girls. They're sitting there behaved. If they didn't laugh at a joke, they just go, oh, no, I didn't like that one. Or the next one they might like. Whatever. They're just sitting there just fucking just paying attention, not causing a scene. You don't have to put up with this. Talk to her. Tell her, look, shut the fuck up. I don't want, you know. And then she's yelling at me back. Okay, yeah, yeah, tell a joke or whatever. And I'm just like, sir, look at the bottom line. Look at your chick. She's not that hot. If she was a 10, I could understand. She's like a 7. All right, look at these other girls around here. There's a lot of fucking 8s and 9s and 10s in the crowd that are hotter and not doing this. And then it just ends badly. She gets dragged out. He leaves. She gives me the finger. Fuck you. I want my money back. And he's like, whatever, dude. Shakes his head. Fucking puts his hand up in the air. And they walk out of the club. That's probably happened. It probably happens six times a year. In my shows, easily. The same scenario, same everything, you know. And then, or, you know, the guy tries to crack a joke. You know, I'll go, hey, you know, I'll work the crowd. I go, how long are you married for? The guy's like, uh, too long. This is the response back from the crowd. Ooh, boo, boo. You hear, asshole, jerk. Now let's flip that. I said to the couple, how long are you married for? And the girl says, too long. Ha 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 <laughs> Claps, applause breaks. Got a better laugh than anything in my set the whole night from all the girls in the crowd. Because that's funny. Like when a girl says too long in your relationship, that's funny. Because it's a joke, but that's really funny because she was just making a joke. You see, she's married too long. She's, But when the guy does it, he's an asshole. He's a jerk. You know, I women followed a girl in the bathroom later. You don't have to put up. He just embarrassed you in front of 300 people. I would never put up with that. I don't know how you do it. I wouldn't. You see what he did? Everybody in the room thinks that your marriage isn't good because what he said. All of that goes on. But with the girl, it's fucking hilarious. And I always call it out. I go, that's a double standard, and I'm not falling for it. You either laugh at both or you, don't, or you groan at both. It's the same thing, the same double standard with the fat, you know, you can make a fat guy joke. You could put a fat guy in a movie, a big slob with friggin', you know, big man tits, jumping off of, you know, a diving board and doing a belly flop in the pool and everybody's laughing because it's funny. God forbid a fat girl. Oh, that's, that's, that's not funny. You do a fat joke towards a fat girl. Oh, oh, that's, that's mean. Fat guy, hilarious. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's not, don't laugh at either. Either laugh at both or don't laugh at either. I, I, I will throw this exception out there. The chick from um, Bridesmaids or whatever, Melissa McCarthy, is different. You see, that's what made that movie. Yes, and I did see it. And there was like six like good laughs in the movie. Um, it's not a total chick flick if you didn't see it. I know I'll get shit for it. But anyway, she does a bunch of fat jokes and they're fucking funny. She's like a fat guy in the fat girl role. And I, I guess this new movie she's got out, um, I don't, you know, I'll go, my friend Bill Burr's in it, so 
I probably will see it, even though, you know, Sandra Bullock, I'm not a fan or whatever. But this chick is funny. This Melissa McCarthy. You guys know who she is, the fat girl from the shit, whatever sitcom it is. Uh, I don't watch it, but you know who I'm talking about. But anyway, she's the fat girl and makes fat jokes. And all of a sudden, that's okay. So let's hope that happens. But let's look. Let's go back in time and find out why we are at this position where the guy is just an idiot and the girl is smart. And everything the guy does is wrong. And he's just, you know, I don't know how he functioned through life. It all started with the fucking... In the, little, in the kids, it all started with the commercials and the sitcoms where dad was the stupid guy and the, the wife and the kids were all smart. And dad, whatever dad did, oh, dad, that's dad. <laughs> dad comes up, dad, did you really do that in the garage? Did you put the garage door open, uh, garage door up backwards? <laughs> that's dad for you. Dad, you want to, and you want me to go to college? That's the little fucking snappy kids remark. And the woman, yeah, well, figures dad, <laughs> you know. Really, dad's the, dad's the same guy that fucking, you know, was paying a mortgage and, you know, bought the house and everything else. And, you know, was raising three kids and working his ass off. But dad's the dumb one. You know, he goes to his job nine to five. He does that well somehow. I don't know how, you know, but, but he's an idiot, basically. And that's what it got ingrained in everybody's head. And every, every commercial, the woman's smart and the guy does something stupid and he gives that little sheepish look. Sorry, honey. And he's like, yeah, well, okay. And, you know, the, the girl with a snappy comeback. And the guy just sits there and takes it. That's what started this. And then women saw those sort of sitcoms where the guy was dumb and sort of commercials. And they go, hey, that's my, that's how my relationship's going to go. And that's where the browbeating started. Because our parents weren't like that. You didn't see our dads walking around. Think about your dad for a second. You see your dad walking around. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I I don't I I won't do that again. I, I you know all right I'll go to my room. Yeah I'm just an idiot. I don't know you know. No you never even see that. Yeah and the relationships were were a hundred times better our parents than than what's going on now because of that shit they had respect for each other. And mom didn't do that to your dad. She didn't treat him like a piece of shit like he's an idiot. You know, women always think that, like, a guy is just, without them, they can't do anything. It's funny because, yeah, without them, they're fucking retarded. It's funny, like, you know, a, you know, the guy will be, like, 34 years old, married five years. Like, oh, I'll make the sandwich. I'll make your sandwich for work because, you, you know, you don't even know how to work the toaster. Really? Before I met you at age 27, what did you think I did? You think I just fucking, I didn't eat? I didn't know how to get a piece of bread. I didn't know how to make a sandwich. I didn't know how to get in my car. I didn't know when I needed to eat. Did I just starve? Was I living on the street because I didn't know anything? Holy shit, how do I get on a plane? I need my wife here because if not, I'm a fucking idiot. Now, somehow they survived without you. Just remember that. You know, uh, he doesn't know. He doesn't even know how to wash the dishes. Really? Oh, yeah, because I never washed a dish in my life. I know. I don't even know. I just threw them out. Before I met you, as soon as I ate off a plate, a fucking a, a plate, I just threw it in the garbage. And the silverware, too, because I don't know how to do dishes. It was amazing. I mean, I spent like fucking $50,000 in silverware and dishes. Thank God I met you because I would have no idea. I didn't know you put the water on it, you scrub it a little, and it gets clean. Holy shit. Thanks, I thanks that I married you because if not, I don't know, I'd be broke. I'd be broke. And that's where it all started. I love it when a guy shits on a woman in a commercial. Just, just, you know, and, that, you know, that commercial's never on for more than like three months because, you know, that, that people didn't respond to it because they're used to the guy, the girl shitting on the guy. So when the guy does it, you know, oh, no, that's not that funny. That's a little mean. What a disaster. And this is what's going on in relationships. There's just, for, if you have some self respect for yourself. If your if your wife is just fucking just bothering you and you do everything wrong and you're an idiot and she makes a face, you try to crack a joke, she makes a face every time. Everything you say, she's like, "Yeah, no, please." He doesn't know what he's talking about in front of everybody. Does all that shit. Just tell her, "Hey, look, I'm not fucking putting up with this anymore." That's all you got to say. Just like, "Look, I'm not living the rest of my life like this with this tension." That you got a problem with everything I do. Because when you met me, you didn't have a problem. It's funny because, you know, what happens in relationships is women, 
when they they they're dating a guy that's boring. He's got a good job. He's a good dude or whatever, but he's just not that exciting, you know. And women, you know, it's they need excitement, right? So then they they break up. She breaks up with that guy. Or the guy breaks up with her, and she's like, I need I need something different. And she goes to the local bar and she sees some guy at the corner of the bar causing a scene. He's fucking drinking shots. He's cursing. He's yelling. He's putting like fucking Leonard Skinner on the, on the jukebox and singing at the top of his lungs. Hey, do another shot. Hey, you know, putting his arm around everybody, having a blast. A fucking guy's guy. He's sweating. You know, he's wearing a fucking Judas Priest shirt and camouflage shorts. Doesn't care. He comes over to you. Hey, do a shot, honey. Oh, I don't I don't know. What is it? Don't worry about it. Just do it. I just kind of intrigued by that. Like, wow, this guy's fun. My last boyfriend would never do this. He didn't want to hang out in the bar. Maybe he had a glass of wine, and then we had to go home. So she's intrigued by that. Next thing I know, she's hanging out with him. She's got, he's got his arm around it. or singing songs at the jukebox. She's hammered. She's doing shots. She never did drinking whiskey. She never did that before because the last boyfriend, oh, no, he'd only let me drink my freaking, uh, my specialty beers. He only wanted the, the fucking wheat pumpkin special edition shit. Gets the number, they start dating. Right, the next day he calls. He stays over a house that night because he's hammered. She goes, I don't want you to drive. And he sleeps on the couch, whatever. He wakes up in the same clothes. Hey, let's go to Atlantic City. There's a party bus come, going down. I mean, my buddies jump on. Let's go. Uh, I don't. Yeah, but I, I, um, I don't know. Just go. Just really? You don't. When are you coming back? I don't know. You don't even know. No, I'm just, we're just going to go down there and fucking go gamble and drink and we'll go see a concert or whatever. Just jump on the bus, call a couple girlfriends, let's go. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be back tonight or tomorrow. Who gives a shit? Tomorrow's Sunday, you got the whole day off. Who cares if we get back late tonight or tomorrow? All right. And she's like, oh my God, this guy doesn't even make plans. He's just, just uh, he just doesn't even give a shit. This is kind of exciting. You know, the last guy, he, my last boyfriend, he didn't map out everything and fucking, you know, we're going here at this time and here and here. And I didn't like being structured like that. I like living like this. This is fun. Jumps on the bus. They go down to Atlantic City, have a blast. They get hammered again two days in a row. He doesn't even change his clothes, right? She's like, what about you're out? Nah, I'll just wear the same thing. My fr- You got any deodorant I can throw on? Yeah, but it's women. All right, fuck it. I'll fuck it. I don't care. I'm going to hang around my buddies. I don't give a shit if I smell. Wears the same outfit the next day. Gets on the bus, they have a blast. She gets home Sunday afternoon, calls all her girlfriends. Oh my God, I met this guy. He's wild. He's fun. I don't know. It's just, I never did something like that before. It was really exciting. He just didn't even give a shit. He just said, let's just, and we just had a blast. We didn't even know where we were going to eat. We didn't make dinner reservations. You know, I didn't know what beer I was drinking. I didn't know any. I just, it, it was fun. He wore the same outfit two days in a row. He slept over my house. He's like, I don't give a shit. And he, bought this, and he wore it again. He didn't even care. We went to a nice restaurant at one point, And he, he just said his camouflage shorts and a Judas Priest concert t-shirt. And it was like, he's like, whatever. I don't give a shit if people look at it. I mean, I, was kind of, I, I like that. Oh, my God. I think I really like this guy. Cut to three years later. They're married. They go into their friend's barbecue, and what is she doing? She's laying out an outfit for him on his bed for him to wear. This is three years later. He walks in. He's like, what's this? Oh, you, you know what? Uh, I, I, I picked out an outfit for you to wear to the barbecue, so you know, this, I think this will be good. What, dude, this is what? Fucking khakis and, and, a, a, and a polo shirt? What, 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 what the fuck is this? What's going on with this? Yeah, and you know those shoes that you bought for the party, you know for that uh, the wedding we went to. I want yeah, those would go go good with this, with the khakis and and the you know and the polo shirt. Yeah, but I don't wear this shit. I wear it like once a year if I have to go to like an office party or something or you know. Yeah, I know, but it's just I think that this will be good for the party because you know, her, you know Nick and uh, Lisa's, you know their company. All the people from the company are going to be there, and they work for like this really, you know, upscale company. And all of her friends are going to be there, so I, they're probably going to, be, you know, dress similar. He's like, yeah, but I, you know, I've known Nick and Lisa my whole life, and a bunch of other, their other friends are going to be there. I'm going to know a lot of people there. 
And, you know, I'm going to wear what I usually wear, like a camouflage shorts. And I probably won't wear a concert T-shirt, but I'll wear another T-shirt because that's what I'm comfortable in. Yeah, but I know, but it, it's I, I don't want her her office people looking at you all weird because they're going to be dressed like that. I don't give what the fuck do I care? Yeah, but I care. Yeah, but I don't. I want to be comfortable. I'm going to my friend's barbecue in his backyard. It's fucking July. I'm not wearing khakis. I don't. I never wear this shit, and I'm not going to wear it now. I want to be comfortable. Did you hear that? This is what I always wear on the weekends. All right, I work my ass off during the week. I'm going to wear camouflage shorts and a t-shirt. That's what it's going to be fucking hot out, and I, and that's what I'm wearing. Yeah, but everybody else, her, I bet you all of her people from her office are going to be dressed like this, and I just don't want, I don't want people looking at you and talking behind your back. Oh, I don't give a shit. Why would I care? I don't even know those people. Who cares if they're talking behind my back? Let them. I'm never going to see him again. And even if I do, who cares? I'm not worried about that. Why would I worry about people that uh, I don't even know what they think? So you want me to be uncomfortable in shit that I never wear just so people that I've never met before don't talk behind my back because I'm really concerned about that. I mean, I'm going to fucking wiretap the place just to hear what people are saying about me. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to be drinking Coors Light out of a can. That's what I drink. And they'll be drinking their fucking crafty fucking, you know, pumpkin special edition beers. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, but do it for me. Please just do it for me. I just, I'm going to feel weird. And I just know people are going to be looking at me like, that's the girl. That's the guy who's married to that guy. That's what everybody's going to be saying. I go, what people Well, from her office? Yeah, but you never met them before. Why do you give a shit? I seriously, I, then, we, then we won't go. I'm not going then. If you're going to wear your, I'm not going. And that's, and all of that happened because she was worried about other people at the party and not getting embarrassed. The guy's not wearing, going in a fucking G-string and a tank top. He's not. That I could say, hey, you're going to embarrass me. Put something, put some clothes on. I get it. And that's the problem in a nutshell in relationships. The woman liked the guy. Remember the first night in the bar? He was wild. He was drinking shots. He's cursing. He's swearing. He's singing. The next day they got on the bus. They went to Atlantic City. Wore the same outfit two days in a row. I like this. Telling all the girlfriends, cut to three years later. That shit's not funny anymore. That you, that's not appropriate to wear that outfit again. No, you got to do this. So she liked the guy in the beginning. She liked them like that. That was what she got attracted to. But then all of a sudden, she didn't find it. She didn't like it anymore. Well, that's your fucking fault. Too bad. Deal with it. When you buy a dog, girls, do you bring the dog home and try to train it to be a cat? Do you fucking browbeat the dog for hours? Go meow. Go me say meow. Do you make the dog, do you sit? have the dog sit in the corner of your apartment and don't bring the dog outside to go walk because hey, it's a cat. They'll just, did you put a litter box in the fucking, in the bathroom and the dog shitting on the carpet because you won't take it out? Did you do that? You wanted a dog. You went to the, you went to the, I'm going to go to the friggin', you know, the mall in one of those places that, you know, a pet store and get a dog. I want a dog. Okay. So you picked out the dog because you wanted the dog, right? You didn't want a cat. The word cat wasn't even mentioned in, in it, in the conversation when you went. You brought the dog home. It was awesome. But then six months later, you wanted the dog to be a cat. Why isn't this thing just, why does this thing want to go out? I want him to go in the, in the, in the litter box in the bathroom. He won't say meow. That's it in a nutshell. You wanted a dog, the dog's always going to act like a dog, always going to be a dog. You want a cat, then go get a fucking cat. I love the silence, too. I know you guys do. But it's unbelievable. Listen, if you, all right, if you got a, if you're in a relationship, and this, this is, if you're in a relationship, this is for the girls, too, with the guys doing it, and your significant other, like, goes through your phone when you come home and check in to make sure you're not doing anything, get out of the relationship. It's over. Your relationship is over. If they're snooping around, looking at everything, who's on Facebook, who's this, 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 all this, well, who's that? I don't even know her. Just 
Why? When are you going to come back? Well, wh- where did you go? And wh- how long were you there for? And then where did you go now? Na- uh, get out of the relationship. It's over. Seriously, if you're going through text messages and phone calls and looking at their phone and where they were going through their computer to see where it looks, what sites they're on, your relationship is over. Why are you with that person? You don't trust them, obviously, right? Obviously, if you're going through their phone and looking at their computer, you don't trust them. So why are you in that relationship? What exactly are you looking for? When you go through their phone, when they get home, whether it's the girl or the guy, what are you looking for? You're looking for to see if she contacted somebody else, a guy or an ex-boyfriend or something? You, well, obviously, you don't trust her if you look at her phone. So just get out of the relationship. Find somebody you trust. In a nutshell, it's that fucking easy. If you think all of that stuff's going on behind your back, you're that crazy and that jealous, get out. Why you? If you really think that person's going to do that to you, why would you want to be with that person? Why? Look at a good relationship. Just think for a second. Someone that's been with some of your friends or your brother or sister or some kind, someone that's married like 20, 25 years. Maybe high school sweethearts in a great relationship, right? Think everybody knows a few of them. Go ask them if they're going to each other's phones when they come home. Ask them if they're looking at Facebook pages and have their passwords just to see what's going on and snooping. Ask them. Ask him if they, when they, when the, the guy goes to the bar and it, does his wife go, hey, send me a picture. I want to make sure you're there. Ask him if that goes on. And you know what? A hundred percent time, a hundred percent of the time, they're going to say no. Well, no, I, I don't, I don't give a shit. I don't even go through my own phone. No, I mean, why would I do that? I'm not going to go through her phone. Exactly. Are you, did she look at you like, no, I mean, no, she has her computer. I got mine. It's why, why, why would she go through mine? She has her own. Exactly. You trust your wife being out? Yeah, she went out with the girlfriends. I, I stayed home and watched the game. It was cool, you know. No, she likes. You didn't ask her to send a picture from the bar she's at to make sure she's actually there? What the fuck? No. I can't even get pictures to my phone. I don't give a shit. No, why would I do? For what? Did You, you, didn't, you didn't text her like 75 times? Every place that she went next, you know, well, how long are you going to be there for? All right, well, text me when you're leaving there and text me when you get to the next bar. And how long, uh, who are you hanging out with there? And is there any girls there? Is there any guy, good-looking guys there? I bet you there is. That's why why'd you stay there that long. Well, when are you coming home? See, you're having fun without me, aren't you? How come we never go out? Not, did you get any, you send any of those texts out? No. I just said, have a good night. If you need a ride home and everybody's drunk, I'll come pick you up. That's the only thing I said, or I, I sent a text. Have fun, honey. Hope you have a, I love you. That was it. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird that relationships that work, none of that shit goes on. None of that drama. None. And they're happy, and they've been together, and they trust each other, and that's it. That's a fucking normal relationship. Not, a, you know, I just, I don't want to piss her off. I just, look, I don't need the aggravation when I get home. Look, your wife doesn't want you to go to a strip club. I get it. You know what? She goes, hey, I don't feel comfortable you being in there. You know what? You got it. You got to go. All right, honey. I, I respect your decision. You got like a hot girlfriend, just a friend that she's a little jealous of. And she's like, look, I really don't want you going out with her. We'll see her at some, you know, functions or whatever parties, but I don't want you going to meet her for lunch. You know what? You got to go, all right, honey, I, res- I don't want to, you know, fuck up our marriage. I get it. I understand that. You know, if she was, same thing, she was on the other foot where, you know, she had a good looking ex guy friend, you might be a little jealous. I get it. So, you know, there's, everyone's going to have a little jealousy in them. I don't feel comfortable when you guys go out. For, all right, no problem. You got to meet them halfway. That's part of your marriage. That's part of commitment. But other than that, what is, go- she looks through my phone when I get home. I got to be careful. Careful of what? Tell her, hey, fuck off. Fuck off. This is my phone. I don't go through your phone. I don't give a shit. What are you trying to find when you're snooping around? Seriously. There's a question out there to to the men and the women. What are you trying? So you're trying. So you're hoping you find something that you catch them. Is that what you're doing? Is that what you hope? What's your ultimate goal by snooping? To go, see, I told you, you were talking to her and you said you weren't. Is that, so So now what did you prove? So where does it go from here? It's a fucking nightmare.
It's it's unbelievable what's going on. I'm telling you, man, you got, you know, you get in a relationship with somebody, you go, look, this is what I like, and I'm probably going to like it the rest of my life. So, all right, look, if you're doing drugs and shit like that, I get it. Don't, but don't even get in that relationship. But if you, you know, a big sports fan, you like watching sports a lot, and you know that going in, don't be mad at the guy fucking five years later on a Tuesday night and a Thursday night and a Sunday when he's watching like basketball and baseball and football. What do you think was going to happen? You think the 28 years he lived before he met you, that he watched sports, he was a big sports nut, and that was his fucking passion, and that was his his stress relief after working his ass off and working his job to sit down and watch a fucking game? You think all of a sudden, since he met you, that now he's not supposed to like that anymore? That stress outlet's not supposed to be there anymore? Are you fucking kidding me? You think you're that important? You think you're that, that you, that he, all of a sudden, you know, you watch sports too much. Yeah, but I, that's what I like doing. I don't go to bars. I don't fucking go to Vegas with my friends. I don't hang out in nightclubs. I don't get a bottle service at a table and wear a fucking button down like those douchebags. Hey, you, you want to come over girls? And they're fucking dancing. The goofy white guy with his hand in the air like, yeah, hey, yo, yo. I'm not that guy. I'm not interested. I don't hang out in strip clubs. I don't do any of that. I don't fucking gamble. I don't go to the racetrack. I don't go to casinos. I don't blow any of my money, but I like watching a game on a Tuesday night. To me, that's a, I, I, that's what I like doing. It makes me happy. Yeah, but my show's on American Idol, and I, I, I you know, we, we should watch it together. Yeah, but I, I don't, the fuck, I'm 34 years old. I don't watch fucking shows that, you know, my 12-year-old niece watches. Yeah, but if we could just watch it together. Don't ever make your significant other go to a place they don't want to be. That is my fucking main, that is the main, the main point I can make in a fuck in this podcast. Don't ever do that because it just builds up resentment, resentment, resentment. They don't want to be there and then eventually they act out. Whether they fucking have an affair or they blow up at you, fucking physical violence, you know, verbal, whatever, just... That's that's when that shit starts. My wife's a big country fan, loves country shows. I'll go and I'll go to a country show with her, and I'm not going because all right, I better just do it. I don't mind going. I'm not a big country fan, but I don't mind going. It's a two three hour show from eight to eleven at night. No big deal. I like live music. At least they play their instruments. They all play. They actually sing, unlike any fucking hip hop or fucking dance pop act. That's all played by tapes and just fucking run around lip sync. I don't want to see that. I will never go to something like that. But live music, I'll go see. So I'll go to a con. And then what I do since, I, you know, I'm like, ah, all right, I'll go. What the hell? I don't really know. Any- I know one song or whatever. She has a good time. That's fine. I don't sit there and mope. I don't fucking go, this sucks. This fucking blows. This song blows. I don't sit there and fucking like a lump on a log and just bitch all night. I know what I'm getting into. I'm like, hey, you know what? Two, three hours out of my life, no big deal. Makes her happy. All right. A lot of her friends aren't country fans, so she doesn't have 10 other people she can go with. But in return, I don't go, yeah, well, you better go to OzFest with me then. You better go to Mayhem Fest with Five Finger Death Punch, Rob Zombie, and Hatebreed. Because I went to that country show. Don't fucking drag them there. They don't want to be there. I don't drag my wife to those shows. I know she doesn't want, she's not going to have a good time. It's loud. It's fucking hot. A bunch of angry white guys fucking sweating. A lot of fucking body odor. All of that shit. Shitty food. Shitty beer. And fucking, you know, heavy music that she has no idea what is. I'm not going to do that. I know better. But don't just, well, she has to, you, I went to your country show. You got to go to my show. Don't. My wife likes romantic comedies. When one comes out, she doesn't even bring it up. If she wants to go see it in a theater or if it's on demand, she doesn't go, hey, you want to watch this? I, the Sandra Bullock one, it looks good. She doesn't even, because she knows I will never watch that. And that's one thing I'll go, absolutely not, because I'll sit there and be miserable for an hour and a half. I'll be fucking critiquing the movie. Oh, yeah, I didn't see that coming. Oh, really? Now she's going to, she doesn't like the guy in the beginning, but then all of a sudden she likes him? Let me guess. Uh, They're going to break up three quarters of the movie, and then at the end they're going to get back together? Aww. And she's going to trip because she's clumsy, and that's going to make it funny whenever she walks into a wall, you know, because that's what, you know, guys like hot chicks that are clumsy. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
I, that's what I'll do the whole movie. I'll be fucking fidgeting like a little fucking kid next to her. She knows that. I know that. So that's the one I go, absolutely not. The country show? Yeah, no problem. I'll go with you. I'll fucking sit there and just enjoy it just like you do. I like that you get so much enjoyment out of it. That makes me happy. That's how it fucking works. But she knows a romantic comedy, I got to sit there. There's going to be a lot of tension. She went to a Broadway show with her family uh, six months ago. She goes, I didn't even ask if you wanted a ticket. I go, good. That was the right move because I'm not going. I don't like singing and dancing. I never liked it. I don't like any of that shit. It's goofy. It's silly. But uh, chicks like it. No problem. Go. She went with her family. Beautiful. If I would have went, got dragged into the city, had to fucking sit there and get a, you know, for a two, three hour show, whatever it is, I would have been miserable. Miserable. And we just know that. And that's why the relationship works. Stop. Well, you have to go. No, you've got to go with me too. There's great books on relationships. This guy, Don Miguel Ruiz. There's a book called The Four Agreements. It's one of the best books I've ever read. Read that book about relationships. It's not so much about relationships, but just about in life in general. Also, he wrote a relationship book called Mastery of Love. Read those books. And that's where I got that dog quote out of. The dog, you didn't want to change him to a cat because I fucking love that. Um, Read those books. I'm telling you, man. It explains relationships. It breaks it down in a nutshell. All the fucking drama, all the assumptions everybody makes. You know, listen, just think of the drama that goes on when you're at, you know, you, uh, your phone dies because you're in it, you're, you're at, um, in an area where fuck, whatever it is, you you go out with your friends and your phone, your battery is dead. Nobody has a charger for the iPhone five. So you can't charge your battery. Now your wife's at home sending you fucking texts every 17 seconds wondering how come you're not getting back to her she's out of her mind she's fucking looking online snooping around trying to figure out calling friends waking people up at one in the morning are you with jim no what what are you i'm sleeping i got work tomorrow i he hasn't got back to me could you call all of this shit all of this shit going on he comes in at 1 30 when he was supposed to come home and she's up where the fuck were you what do you mean? You didn't respond to my 75 text message. Yeah, well, my my battery died. What? Yeah, look at my phone. See, my battery died. I left the house. It was only like 40%. I should have charged before I left, but I forgot. And by the time fucking hanging out or whatever, and this battery shit anyway, it died. Oh, yeah. You don't know how worried I was ready to call 911. I was going to call the cops. I called your parents, but then I hung up because I was going to wake them. All of that drama for that shit. Because it was just an assumption that he was out doing something. He got in a car accident. He's fucking cheating on you. All of that stuff. And none of it was going on. It was just a dead battery. But you never put that in the fucking equation. And for four hours, you, you had every fucking negative thought in your head what was going on. And none of it was. He was sitting at the bar with his two guy friends with fucking six people in the whole place. He was out of Friday's. Okay, there was three fucking people at the bar and him and his two buddies at a table. That's it. That's all that was in there. And they were watching the fucking St. Louis Cardinal Milwaukee Brewer game on ESPN. That's what and and fucking eating food. You really think something was going on? This is what you do. Your wife or your your husband or your boyfriend, whatever, goes, look, you know, go with me to this thing, whatever the event it is. And you tell them no, and they keep fucking asking you. Then you just go, honey, will it really mean a lot to you if I go? Phrase it that way. And if she goes, it really will, all right, I'll go. You take the bullet. Okay, if that really means a lot to her, that's how you phrase it. If it doesn't, then fucking stop bothering me. Okay? I know a guy who, wh- whose wife gets so jealous when he goes out. And he go- only goes out like three times a year. That he- after we watch the sporting event, we're going to go to another bar to have a couple beers. And she was mad that he was going. He was out of town. It wasn't like he was, you know, not late coming home. 
She took a picture of all his clothes in boxes by the door and sent it to him. You think that's a good relationship? You think that's, that's, that's normal? Look, if you don't have kids and this shit's going on, get the fuck out of the relationship. Seriously, if you're getting browbeaten, everything you do is dumb, your boyfriend's jealous, your husband is, all he does is, you know, just say mean things to you, treat you like shit, all right, just fucking everything you do is wrong, you're an asshole, why would you do that? The guy, same way, your girl thinks you're dumb, you're an idiot, treats you like shit, doesn't let you hang out with your friends anymore, all of that stuff. Look, if you you got a guy friend, he goes get gets hookers and fucking and, and happy endings at massage parlors. Your wife goes, I don't want you hanging out with that guy. I get it. You know what? You got to choose. You want to hang out with that scumbag or your wife. That you know, She has a point there. But if she doesn't like a friend because who knows what. You know, because God forbid a woman doesn't overanalyze every situation. You look, look, the guy's been my friend for 33 years. Now I got to stop hanging out with him. Why? Because she fucking, you know, you don't like that he drinks a lot and he swears or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, too bad. I'm going to fucking hang out with him every once in a while. Seriously, just get out of the relationship now. If someone's snooping through your phone and looking, I want to see your phone, get out. Your relationship's over. You don't trust that, but get out. No reason to be in that. Because we don't know what they're looking for, but once they find it, ah, see, I got you. I knew. Just ask them. If you don't trust them, what the fuck are you with them for? I don't get it. What is going on? A fucking are we that damaged? Are uh, people that we have to stay in a relationship because it is fucking shit? Is that the way you want to live the rest of your life? When you look back, when you're seventy years old and sitting on your porch, fucking, are you going to be happy that you fucking wasted thirty years of your life married to someone that just fucking treated you like a piece of shit? Was it worth it? Don't you think if you could look back and go, if there was one thing I could have done, just get, I should have got out of that relationship when I knew it was fucking going to be bad. Why do you want, you got one life. Why would you want to fucking live like that? Find, there's somebody out there for you. There is. Somebody's going to understand and someone's going to understand this is the way this person is and I'm not going to try to change them. If I don't like the way they are, I'm not getting in the relationship. There's going to, there's people out there that get that. The guy, hey, just that's just the way he is. That's the way she is. So why why would I, you know, why would I want to get move this relationship to the next level if I know that's just the way she is? She's never going to change. That's what she likes. So either I deal with it or I fucking move on. That's it. That's that fucking simple. Especially if you don't have kids. If you don't have kids with this person, get the fuck out. Who cares? Well, we got a nice place. We got a good condo, and I really like. So what? So what? Find a fucking find your own apartment. Move on with your life. In a fucking year or two, when that shit's over and you get over the fucking you know the breakup of the relationship and you find somebody new, you're not gonna, you're gonna look back. Oh, I can't believe I dealt with that shit for that long. That's what you're gonna be thinking. It's gonna suck for a while, but then all of a sudden you're gonna be like, damn, this is the way life should be. This is the way to fucking live life. Everything in your life's gonna be better. God. Your significant other is not that stupid, all right? Stop thinking they are. That's your fucking issue. That's your problem. Maybe you got issues with your daddy and daddy did that. I don't know what's going on, but stop fucking, all right? He's not that dumb. It's fucking, I love how the women, you know, the, I'm independent. I'm independent. I don't need a man. I believe me. I don't need anybody. I'm an independent woman. I could do it on my own. Yeah, then you get in a relationship with him fucking a year later. Uh, I, I want you to go to my uh, nie- step-niece's second birthday party. Nah, I'm not going to that. There's a bunch of fucking kids there, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go play fucking softball with my friends. Yeah, but I, I, I want you to go. I'm not fucking going. I'm not hanging out with a bunch of kids on a Saturday afternoon. I work my ass off. Well, yeah, but uh, why, why do you want me to go? I'm just going to feel weird without you there. What happened to, what happened to you being Miss Independent? All of a sudden, you're not independent anymore, huh? You can't really, you can't go somewhere by yourself. Remember, remember when I first met you, we went on our first couple of dates. I don't need a man. I haven't had a man in a year. I'm independent. I do my own thing. Really? What happened to that? So you were fucking full of shit, weren't you? I'm independent. 
I don't need anybody. Yeah, then go fuck yourself. Miss Independent, go fuck yourself. Everybody's going to be looking a bit weird at the party. if uh, They're going to ask where you are. Yeah, well, tell him. He doesn't hang out with two-year-olds. Tell him the truth. He doesn't hang out with two-year-olds that he doesn't know, especially if he doesn't know. Now get in your truck, Miss Independent, and go to your fucking stupid birthday party. I hate you. Oh, really? Yeah, I just want you to go. I feel weird being here by... Nobody's focusing on you. You're not going to feel weird there being here by yourself. The fucking moms, the fucking stupid fucking soccer moms just babbling and gossiping around. Everybody's going to go, where's your husband? Ah, he's home. He just had some stuff to do around the house. Okay, and that's it. Nobody's focusing on you. There's fucking 32-year-olds running around fucking grabbing TVs and iPads and they're moving shit and knocking over glasses and and running upstairs and you're fucking blocking the stairs so no kids get hurt. That's what's going on. Nobody's focused on you, Miss Independent. You're not that important. So, Miss Independent, go fuck yourself. I don't need anybody. Good. Then fucking I'm moving out. All right, <laughs> I'm done. I hope I help somebody here somehow with my fucking dumb, stupid logic. But in some weird way, it's going to make some sense to some people. The rest are going to go, He's a f- the fuck is wrong with him, which I like too.